Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Let's go! Yes, you're raring to go for a breakfast that's sparked with delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Your appetite races for a heaping bowlful of those king-size kernels of premium rice or wheat, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Mmm, just take a luscious mouthful, taste the nut-like flavor, the special crispness that's yours only in Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat, because they're shot from guns. Taste them tomorrow morning, sure. Frankie Warren was an orphan lad whose right leg had been crippled in a Klondike mine explosion. In spite of his misfortune, he remained cheerful and plucky. And as soon as he was able to get around on crutches, he began earning his livelihood by repairing dog sleds and harness for travelers on the Yukon Trail. One day, two sourdoughs stopped at the weather-beaten cabin which Frankie had taken over. Frankie hobbled out to greet them. Hello there. Hello there, young fella. Howdy. Need any repairs on your sled or your harness? If you do, you've come to the right place. Oh, we just stopped to get rid of one of our dogs. Get rid of him? Yeah, he's in bad shape. Too weak to work in the traces any longer, so there's no use wasting any more food on him. Well, which dog do you mean? Uh, the right wheeler. Can't you tell just by looking at him? The dog which the stranger had pointed out was a big, sorrowful-looking St. Bernard. His sides were gaunt and his once majestic head now lolled weakly from his shoulders. Yeah, I'll go take it out the traces. Well, what's the matter with him? He's sick, I guess. Gone lame, too. Pads look like All raw right. beefsteak. Well, how long have you had him? Oh, about a month or so. Brought him down on the Dye Beach, fresh off the boat. 400 bucks he cost us. Uh, I got him unharnessed, Kern. Are you going to take care of him, or you want me to do it? No, I'll do it. St. Bernard, freed from the traces, ventured a few shaky steps toward the cabin. But his legs soon gave way, and he collapsed helplessly to the ground. Now, look at the lousy mutt. I'll hey, give don't him. kick him. I gotta move him some way. Why don't you shoot him right here and be done with it? What? Not in sight of the team. It stirs him up too much to see a dog killed. Well, you're not gonna shoot him. What do you think I'm gonna do? Can't pull his weight any longer. Well, if you don't want him anymore, leave him here with me. I'll take care of him. Hey, now. You're kind of soft-hearted, ain't you? Well, I just don't like to see a dog killed, that's all. Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. That dog cost us 400 bucks. We sell him to you at half price. $200. $200? But you were just going to shoot him. <laughs> we got to get part of our investment back. Otherwise, that 400 bucks is a dead loss. Is that right, Slayton? Sure it is. Well, I, I don't have $200. Oh? Well, how much do you have? Well, I... I don't know. About 150, I guess. 150. All right, we'll sell them to you for 150. Oh, but I can't spare that money. It's all I've got. Suit yourself. If you don't want to buy them, I'll just have to shoot them. I'll get my six shooter. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait. I... I'll give you the money. <laughs> sure. I thought you'd change your mind... <laughs> when the two sourdoughs had gone, Frankie half-dragged, half-carried the sick dog into his cabin. He made a comfortable bed for him by the stove, 
and then brought him some food and water. Uh, here you go, boy. Uh, there. From now on, there'll be no more kicks and no more whippings either. You're just going to stay right here by the stove till you're well again. Under Frankie's gentle care, the St. Bernard quickly regained his strength. And with every day that passed, the bonds of affection between the orphan boy and the huge dog grew stronger and stronger. Whether Frankie was hobbling about on his crutches or seated inside the cabin, the big St. Bernard was never more than a few feet away from his new master. Several weeks after Frankie had acquired the dog, Sergeant Preston and King stopped at the boy's cabin. So this is your new partner. I've heard about him. Oh, isn't he a swell dog? He certainly is, Frankie. I'm no expert on St. Bernard's, but this one looks like a real champion. What's his name? Oh, I call him Lucky, because it was lucky for both of us that he came here. Did he just stray here? Oh, no. He, he belonged to two sourdoughs named Kern and Slayton. They were using him as right wheel dog in their team. He got sick and lame and couldn't go any farther. So they were going to shoot him. And instead, you took him off their hands, is that it? Well, I I had to buy him. Buy him? I thought you said they were going to shoot him. Oh, they were. But I guess the one named Kern figured he, he could get some money out of me. He knew I couldn't bear to have him shoot the dog. Well, how much do you have to pay? All the money I had. $150. But, Frankie, you were saving that money to go back to the States, weren't you? Oh, that's all right. I can save some more. Besides, Lucky's worth a lot more than that as far as I'm concerned. Well, how much will you need altogether? Well, I can make it back to the States on, oh, five or six hundred dollars, I guess. What about the operation on your leg after you get there? The doctor in Dawson said it would have to be done by a specialist. He says there's a doctor in San Francisco who can do it. But it'll probably cost at least five hundred dollars. Well, Frankie, let's hope you can have that operation as soon as possible. Come on, King. King and Lucky were lying by the stove... At Sergeant Preston's summons, both dogs arose and trotted eagerly toward the Mountie. Oh, hey, the sergeant didn't call you, Lucky. He was calling King. The two of them seem to have made friends. Lucky probably hates to break off the acquaintance. I guess that must be it. Well, goodbye, Frankie. Uh, goodbye, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> Once again, Lucky pricked up his ears and whined. He took a step toward Sergeant Preston and then halted as though puzzled or confused. Well, golly, I, I believe Lucky wants to follow you, Sergeant. Look at him. Yes, I see. You must really have a way with dogs. Oh, I doubt if that's the explanation. Lucky strikes me as being a one-man dog, and you're the man. Well, I've got to be hitting the trail. Bye, Frankie. So long, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> the following morning, at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston reported to Inspector Maynard's office. King was at his master's side. As the sergeant entered the office, he saw a well-dressed man seated beside the inspector's desk. You wanted to see me, Inspector? Oh, yes, Sergeant. I'd like you to meet this gentleman. Sergeant Preston, this is Mr. Lewis Shelley of San Francisco. How do you do, sir? Oh, very glad to know you, Sergeant. Well, George, that's a beautiful dog you have there. Malamute is here. That's right. You sound as though you're interested in dogs. I am. Very much so. In fact, the reason I, I've come to Yukon, Sergeant, is to locate a stolen dog. Belonging to you? That's right. He's a St. Bernard, and a very valuable one. He's won half a dozen blue ribbons and two best in shows. Naturally, I'm very anxious to get him back. Well, how did he happen to get stolen? Well, as you probably know, there's been quite a premium on dogs all along the West Coast ever since the gold rush started. There are regular gangs of dog snatchers operating in all the big cities. Yes, so I've heard. They grab all the dogs they can lay their hands on, especially the big dogs, and ship them up here to the Yukon for sled work. Anyone? Uh, well, to make a long story short, that's what happened to the champion. A careless attendant led him out of his kennel. He wandered away somewhere, and the next thing we knew, he was missing. Well, uh, you know for sure that he was shipped up here to the Yukon? Yes, that's definite. You see, I hired the Pinkerton people to find him. They located the man who had stolen him and found out that he had been shipped up to Day Beach on a smuggling schooner called the Portland Lass. And the trail ends right there, I take it. Yes, unfortunately. However, I'm offering a reward of $2,000 to anyone who finds him and returns him, with no questions asked. I'm hoping that may get results. Well, is there any particular way the dog can be identified? Well, his color is white with dark brindles. I've written down an exact description, but I I suppose all St. Bernard's look alike unless you're a breeder. I think the best way he can be identified is by his name. What do you mean? His full name is Champion King Emperor of Sempak. 
but he answers to the name of King. King? The sergeant's dog is also named King. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Mr. Shelley, I think I know where your dog is. What's that? Good heavens, uh, I knew the Mounties were efficient, but I didn't know you were that efficient. Uh, it's pure <laughs> luck this time. You see, sir, I was visiting a person yesterday who owns a St. Bernard. Beautiful dog, white and brindle. When I called King, the St. Bernard responded. Twice, in fact. Why, oh, Sergeant, that's wonderful news. Where is he? At a cabin on the Yukon Trail, about eight or nine miles south of here. Sergeant, suppose you go and get the dog and bring him back to town. Mr. Shelley is staying at the Victoria Hotel. Well, uh, very well, sir. You don't look very pleased with the assignment. Is there something wrong, Sergeant? The person who owns the dog, sir, is an orphan boy. He's grown very attached to that St. Bernard. I'm afraid it's going to break his heart when he finds out he'll have to part with the dog. We'll continue our story in just a moment. So you two kids want to play a new whistle game today? Yes, sir. Now, as I get it, Billy, Sandra and I can say anything we want about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And you stop us with the whistle if you think we're wrong. Then I can trip you up, too. All right, just you try and do it. You can't stop me when I say there's nothing tastes quite as scrumptious for breakfast as a heaping bowl of delicious, crisp Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. <laughs> I got you there. A second bowl of Quaker puffed rice or wheat tastes just as swell as the first. Well, I have to admit you're right. But you won't trip us up on the fact that premium grains of wheat and rice are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size. So they taste crisp and delicious as nuts in November. <laughs> You're wrong. I say Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice taste even better than nuts in November. Oh, he tripped us up again, Sandra. But let him try and do it on the subject of nourishment. Quaker puffed wheat and rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And I know for sure about the picture of the smiling Quaker man on the front of every package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, that's the way all you fellas and girls can be sure of getting the swellest tasting breakfast ever. The one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. So always remember to buy the big red and blue packages with the picture of the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. While Sergeant Preston was finding out about the stolen St. Bernard dog, the two sourdoughs who had sold the dog to Frankie Warren were seated in a cabin on Caribou Creek. Kern, the bigger of the two men, was staring gloomily out the window at the frozen landscape. Slayton, his partner, was reading the newspaper called the Klondike Nugget. Finally, Kern spoke. Fine mess we're in. This claim we staked out ain't no good, and we're darn near broke. Haven't even got enough money to get back to the States. Hey, hey, listen to this. Listen to what? This notice here in the paper. I'll read it to you. $2,000 reward for the return of a valuable St. Bernard dog, which was stolen from its owner in San Francisco. What's that got to do with us? Shut up and listen. The dog is known to have been shipped to Dye Beach aboard the schooner Portland Lass and was presumably sold to prospectors outfitting for the Klondike. Holy smoke. That big St. Bernard that we bought was off the Portland Lass. The doggone right it was. Hey, where do you have to go to collect the reward? Now, let's see. It says the reward will be handed over immediately upon delivery of the dog to Mr. Thomas Shelley at the Victoria Hotel in Dawson. No questions asked. Uh -huh. You thinking of the same thing I'm thinking? I'm thinking we better go and get the dog back from that triple kid we sold him to. Well, come on, get your parking. We'll start right yeah, now. All right. Oh, hello. Oh, it's you two. <laughs> Still remember us, huh? What do you want? We want to come in and talk to you for a minute. Hey. Kern pushed the door wide open and started to shoulder his way into the cabin. But he stopped short as Lucky greeted him with a deep-throated growl. I guess the dog remembers us, too. He remembers you all right. And he doesn't like either of you. Better quiet him down, because I'm still packing that six-shooter. 
I might have to use it if that dog makes any trouble. Quiet, quiet, Lucky. You better go back over by the stove and lie down. That's better. Now, come on, Slayton. We'll go inside tell the kid why we came here. Right. Now, hurry up and tell me what you want. All right. Now that the dog is well again, we thought you might want to sell him back to us. Well, I don't. So you may as well go. Oh. Now, that's too bad, kid. What do you mean? Since you won't sell us the dog, I guess we'll just have to take him, whether you like it or not. You can't do that. No, you just watch. Slayton. Yeah. Take some of that rawhide that's hanging on the wall. Make a muzzle for the dog. All right. You won't ever get a muzzle on Lucky. He'll tear you to pieces before you can put it on. We ain't gonna put it on. You're gonna put it on for us. <laughs> Least of ways you are if you want to stay healthy. Now, come on. Get busy. A short time later, the muzzle was completed and Frankie was forced to put it on Lucky. The big St. Bernard didn't understand why his master should do such a thing, but he accepted the muzzle quietly. Then Slayton fastened the leash to his collar. Now then, fella, you're coming along with us. Come on, get moving. Once outside the cabin, the two men tied him to their sled. Then Kern and Slayton returned to the cabin. What do you want now? You've taken Lucky, isn't that enough? Before we leave, we're going to tie you up, just to make sure you don't go spilling the beans about what we did. Grab him, Slayton. Yeah, let go. Ah, let go. After tying and gagging Frankie, the two sourdoughs left the cabin and headed for Dawson. Line, Kobuck. Line the team, fella. All right, mush. Mush. Lucky resisted frantically as the sled jerked forward, and the big dog's violent efforts to free himself acted as a considerable break on the team. Come on, Lucky! Kern flogged the St. Bernard repeatedly with his whip, but Lucky wouldn't stop struggling and had to be half-dragged along the trail. Finally, as the team headed up a steep rise, Slayton called a halt. Hey, Kern, stop the team! Ho! 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 What's wrong? Uh, maybe we better hogtie that mutt and put him on the sled. We can haul him along easy enough that way. That's a good idea. The two men tied Lucky's paws together and dragged him up on the sled. As they prepared to resume their journey, they saw another dog team approaching on the trail below. It was Sergeant Preston on his way to Frankie's cabin. Hey, ain't that a mounty down there? Yeah, it looks that way. If he gets a look at us and finds out what happened to the kid, he'll know that we were the guys that did it. What's more, he'll know which way we're heading. You're right. We better cut over the east before he gets any closer. Yeah, it looks as though we're taking a shortcut to one of the creeks. All right, G, call back G there. Now, must you, Huskies, must! <laughs> When Sergeant Preston arrived at Frankie's cabin, he found Frankie lying bound and gagged on the bunk. Frankie! Here, let me get this gag off. Oh, golly. Thanks, Sergeant Preston. I'll have these ropes off in a minute. What happened? Those two men are so lucky to me. They came back and took him away. First, As Sergeant Preston to... untied the crippled boy, Frankie told him how Kern and Slayton had stolen the big St. Bernard dog. Can you go after them and get Lucky back, Sergeant? Can you please? I'll go after them, Frankie, and I promise you they'll be punished for what they did, but I'm afraid you may never get Lucky back. What? Well, what do you mean? Well, the truth is, I came here to take Lucky away from you. Oh, well, Sergeant, you... you're joking, aren't you? I wish I were. You see, Frankie, I found out this morning that Lucky's a valuable show dog. It was stolen from his owner in San Francisco. The owner's come to the Yukon. He's offering $2,000 reward for the dog's return. Inspector Maynard sent me here to get Lucky and bring him back to town. But, Sergeant, Lucky and I are pals. You can't take him away from me. I have no choice, Frankie. Lucky was stolen from his rightful owner. And as a police officer, it's my duty to see his return. Naturally, the reward money will go to you. I don't want the money. It's Lucky I want. Sergeant, please, please don't take him away from now me. Now, listen, Frankie. Things may not work out as bad as you think. That reward money will get you back to the States and pay for the operation on your leg. It means you'll be able to walk again without crutches. Oh, golly. If I only could. You can and you will, providing we can arrest Kern and Slayton before they turn the dog over to his owner. But I don't understand. You said yourself Lucky would have to be returned. He will, but I want you to be the one who returns him. Once Kern and Slayton get their hands on the reward money, there'll be no legal way to get it back. Even though they stole Lucky from me? The dog was already stolen property, and the reward was offered to anyone who returned him, with no questions asked. Our only hope is to arrest them before they get a chance to collect the reward. Oh, golly, Sergeant, do you think you can? That depends on how fast King and the team can get us to Dawson. Come on, Frankie, get your parker. You're coming to Dawson with me. More than an hour later, Kern and Slayton reached Dawson City. Before entering town, they covered Lucky up with a tarpaulin.
to avoid attracting attention. When they arrived at the Victoria Hotel, they drove their team around to the back of the building. Then they went into the hotel and found out Thomas Shelley's room number from the desk clerk. A few minutes later, they knocked on his door. Yes? Are uh, you Mr. Thomas Shelley? I am. Oh, well, we've come to collect that reward money you're offering. You mean you... You have the dog, but I thought... Oh, we got your dog all right. Don't worry about that. We'll turn him over to you just as soon as we see the color of your money. Now, uh, have you got the 2,000 bucks with you right now? Why, of course I have. I can pay you right out of my wallet here. And we'll go get the dog right now and bring him up to your room. Come on, Slayton. Right. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was just halting his team in front of the hotel. Hulking! Hulking! Husky! One off! You stay here, Frankie. I'll go on up to Mr. Shelley's room. All right, Sergeant. There's still a chance we're not too late. At that moment, King caught a scent which he had smelled back at Frankie's cabin. It was the scent of his dog friend, the big St. Bernard called Lucky. King had heard the name Lucky as the sergeant and Frankie talked, and he sensed that his master was looking for the dog. He whined and tugged at the sergeant's sleeve. What's the matter with King, Sergeant? He wants to show me something, I guess. Sorry, King, I can't stop and look right now. I'm in a hurry, boy. Well, it sounds important. King usually has a reason for anything he does. Maybe we'd better take a look. Wait, wait a minute. I'm coming too, sir. Frankie hobbled after the sergeant as he followed King around to the back of the hotel. The husky stopped at a loaded sled and began tugging at the tarpaulin which covered the load. What? Something moving under there. I'll take it off, King. What? It's Lucky. They've got him all tied up. Looks like we've beaten Kern and Slayton after all, thanks to King. Don't be too hey. sure of that, Mounty. Get your hands up. Kern and Slayton had come around the side of the building and had seen Frankie and the sergeant examining their sled. You'd better put that gun away, Kern. You're already in trouble for stealing this boy's dog. Don't make it any worse by resisting arrest. Don't make me laugh. That dog's worth 2,000 bucks to me and Slayton here. 2,000 bucks that'll get us back to the States in style. If you think any two-bit redcoat's gonna stop us, you got another thing coming. Now start backing into that shed over there, both of you. Sorry, but I don't think I will. I'm coming over and take that gun away from don't you. Try anything, Mounty. I got an itchy trigger finger. You're not out on the trail now, Kern. You're in Dawson City with hundreds of people in hearing distance. You pull that trigger and you'll swing on a gallows just as sure as your hand is shaking right now. He's right, Kern. Shut up. Can't you see he's just trying to scare you? I'd say you're the one that's scared, Kern. Take him, Kern! Hey, hey, Kern had been watching Sergeant Preston. He wasn't prepared for King's savage attack. The husky's fangs crunched down on his gun hand and the bullet plowed harmlessly into the ground. The sergeant's gun had already cleared leather. Hold it, Slayton, unless you want a broken arm. Get your hands up. That's better. Oh, for Pete's sake, call, call off your dog. Get All right, away. King, that's enough, boy. I'm getting uh, covered. Get up on your feet, Kern. Uh, You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. Uh, a short time later, Sergeant Preston and Frankie Warren turned Lucky over to his owner in the latter's hotel room. Is this your dog, Mr. Shelley? Hey, Sergeant, you found him. I'll tell the world this is my dog, the champion himself. Come here, fellow. Sergeant Preston told Mr. Shelley how Frankie had saved the dog's life and nursed him back to health. Son, I'm more grateful than I can say. Oh, that's all right. By George, I'm going to boost that reward to $3,000. You've earned every penny of it. That dog is my most prized possession. He's more than a possession to Frankie. What do you mean, Sergeant? Frankie loves that dog, Mr. Shelley. They've gotten to be mighty good pals these last few weeks. But I, I dare say. Frankie, maybe you'd better say goodbye to Lucky right now and wait for me out in the hall. There's something I'd like to talk over with Mr. Shelley. I'll bring the reward money to you. All right, Sergeant. Come here, Lucky. The big, sorrowful-looking St. Bernard trotted over to the boy and nuzzled his hand. Then Frankie bent down and let the dog lick his face. G goodbye, Lucky. Oh, pal. Frankie tried hard to blink back the tears that were stinging his eyes. Thomas Shelley looked at the sergeant uncomfortably. Well, I, I guess I'd better go now. As Frankie closed the door behind him, the big St. Bernard whined and scratched at the door frantically. Easy, fella. You know, Mr. Shelley, I'd say you're going to have a mighty unhappy champion now that Frankie's gone out of his life. With you. Hang it all, what can I do? You told me over at headquarters this morning 
Now, the careless kennel hand was responsible for your dog being stolen. Yes, that's right. I'll bet you fired that man. I certainly did. But what's that got to Frankie do with Frankie will be going back to the States for an operation on his leg. Don't you suppose he might be the ideal man to take care of the champion? By George, Sergeant, that's an idea. Son, get back here. I want to talk to you. A moment later, Frankie re-entered the room. Yes, sir? Well, see here, son. The champion here needs a special hand. Uh, an ordinary kennel man won't do. How, uh, how would you like to come back to the stage with me and take on the job? What? You mean a job just taking care of Lucky all the time? That's right. You'll, uh, you'll take care of Lucky, but that's not the principal reason for taking you back to the stage. I, I want to give you a home and an education. I want you to have everything I'd give my own son. You'll, uh, you'll go to school, make friends. You'll, uh, you'll have to work hard and study hard, but there'll be time for play. Well, uh, how do you that sound to you. Oh, golly. Golly. Oh, thanks, Mr. Shelley. And thank you, Sergeant Preston. Make good, Frankie. Just make good. That's all the thanks I want. <laughs> yes, King. About time for you and me to step out of the picture. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many top action Hollywood movie stars. It's Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. These ready to serve cereals are shot from guns. They're crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with nut like flavor, too. Pour yourself a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream. Top with fruit. It's keen. It really hits the spot. And it's good for you. Take a tip. Ask Mom to order both delicious kinds in the big red and blue Quaker packages. That's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the stolen box. When King and I heard about the robbery and shooting on the trail to Indian Creek, we set out to catch the crooks and recover the box meant for the bank. We didn't expect to run into the situation that developed, and after some tense moments, when we met the crooks, we found that there was a surprise in store for all of us. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.